Today I speak in depth with Edwin van der Zaar. The legendary goalkeeper has won 26 major honors in his incredible career. He also holds the all-time Premier League record for the most consecutive clean sheets. Internationally, he has represented the Netherlands 130 times, and today he has come full circle as the proud CEO of his beloved Ajax Amsterdam. How are you doing, Eugene? I'm good, thank you. I'm good. How are you and your family? Good? Family's fine, yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, my daughter just uh, on her way to Italy. My son is uh, going to his girlfriend to pick up her uh, in a university degree. And my wife uh, went, uh, I think she played tennis now. So I'm uh, on, my, on, on my own working at home. <laughs> oh, well, thank you so much for sparing the time. You know what? I owe your lovely wife, Anne-Marie, a thank you. Do you know the story behind this? And I remember in 2008, I, I met you outside the ground after we beat Liverpool and I got a photograph. Now it was one of these selfie photographs, but the problem was um, I'm five foot eight. Okay, yeah, <laughs> and you were, you, were, you were like six foot six. So I, I cropped half of your head in this photo. So I had a mission with myself. Next time I meet you, I have to get a proper photo, you know? So one year later, I meet you again, but because it was so busy, I don't think you heard me calling your name, but the lovely Anne-Marie told you to turn around and go back and take a picture with me. Okay. Now, so first of all, I'm very happy you listened to your wife, Edwin. <laughs> um, but I did the same thing again, same idea. Someday we'll get the full picture, someday. <laughs> you, you, you can take it now, then we have almost a selfie. Yeah. yeah. Well, there you go. I'll definitely take a screenshot of this. Um, okay, Edwin. So look, I don't want to take up too much of your time. So we'll jump right in. Well, I just want to ask you a couple of questions about your career. Uh, going back, all the way back, uh, your first professional uh, club was Ajax of Amsterdam. You've come full circle. You're back there again as CEO. And you're doing a wonderful job, by the way. But going back to those early 90s, and Ajax have always had this incredible knack, if you like, of producing incredible talent. I don't expect you to share your secrets with me as a club, but that team in particular, to the best of my knowledge, a couple of teams have gone the season unbeaten, but no team in history, apart from Ajax in 94, 95, has gone the season unbeaten in the league and the Champions League. For a player, the main thing is, of course, uh, to, win, uh, to win trophies and uh, do that in a certain way or style of play uh, that a club... Uh, a club belongs to or what the DNA of the club is and yeah the Ajax is, is developing young players giving young players a chance on the high level and, uh, and that happened in the 70s that happened in the 80s uh, it happened to us in the, in the mid 90s and of course uh, we're still doing that so in that way uh, Ajax is uh, in my view one of a kind uh, we're not a buying club we're a club that, that develops and um, yeah all the players in my era with, with Davis with, with, with Clive with, with Frank Rondeboer, Overmars, uh, Lidmane, uh, Seedorf. It's unbelievable. When you're listing off these names, it's just, I mean, they're all world beaters. They're superstars. And mm. I, I, always, I always feel it's an awful injustice to football that the Netherlands never won a World Cup. It will happen. I know you were in several finals. We played in uh, three finals eh, in the 70s and uh, we had a final in 2010. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's uh, it's the pinnacle of uh, of a country and and a, and a club, of co of course. But we're 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 still a reasonable small uh, small country, only 17 million people. You know so in that way, I think that. on the world of football and the scale of world football with with, with Spain, uh, Brazil, England, Germany, uh, Argentina. So it's it's um, it's a, it's a big big ask, but uh, of course, uh, it's uh, it's it's the ultimate dream, I think, for for Dutch football to. Uh, to be, uh, be world champion at, at one point. Absolutely. I have no doubt it will happen. Um, I, they're one of these teams that when you're from a different country, they're like everybody's second favorite team. We're always rooting for. I think it's just a whole package, the history of the players, mm -hmm. the talents that has come through, and also something simple like the color. It's just, yeah. there's something magical about the orange. It, it really is. Okay, Edwin. So just uh, let me ask you, I want to ask you briefly about uh, Louis van Gaal. So, um, obviously you worked with him at Ajax and I had the pleasure of meeting Louis many times as manager of Manchester United. Um, but going back, what a lot of people I think maybe don't know 
is if they're not from the Netherlands, especially, he had a very difficult year in 94, 95. Um, his wife passed away in 1994. The easiest thing and the most understandable thing would have been for him to take a step back from football. So mm -hmm. I always had Hugh's ad admiration for the fact that I know his daughters, I believe, convinced him to continue. But what a year. So I just want to know, I mean, I know he's a very strong character. Can I just ask you about Louis van Gaal? How important is Louis van Gaal to the story of Edwin van der Zaar? No, I think a big one. I think if without Louis, I don't think he would have played professional football. I think uh, he, always, he was playing cards with his, with his friends uh, once a month or something. And my coach at the amateur club, uh, yeah, one told me, listen, Louis, I got two players. Uh, you can blindfold it. You can, you can take these players. They will be, uh, will be uh, good players. I say, okay, yeah, you talk too much, just, just deal the cards and everything. And uh, at a certain point, uh, he kept nagging and nagging, okay, send them over for training. And I trained three times uh, at Ajax and I got a contract. And two years later, uh, when Louis was, uh, was, was the main coach, he uh, yeah, gave me the opportunity in 93 and I took it. Mm -hmm. And I didn't look back. So in, in that way, um, giving, giving young players a chance, that happened to me. Uh, coaches, managers, of course, yeah, they, they need to have the luck that that is a crop of players, and also uh, the, the the coach, the mentality of the coach, uh, the 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 way he prepares the team, tactically, mentally, uh, lets you believe in yourself. And I think that that was Louis for us uh, was was the father figure uh, with a young crop of ice players developing and and conquering Europe. And, and we didn't know that we were so good. And at a certain point, uh, yeah, you, 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 you get the confidence. And, and, and of course, with the guidance of Louis, uh, we, uh, we made history. Yes. Yes. I always had huge respect for him. And I was very excited when he came to United. Uh, finished as a, an FA Cup winner, you know, but a bit of an anticlimax of the way he departed the club. I felt sorry about that. But he was very nice um, as a man as well. Just from a fan's point of view, my seat's in Old Trafford right beside the bench. So I shook his hand oh, yeah. after mo yeah, after every game. And at the end of the season, he remembered my name, which was a nice touch. And he said, have a nice hey, summer. That's, yeah. that's, the, that's the one thing we never met because I was never on the bench, of course. I was there there you go. Then, the other side of everything. So I was, I, was, I, was, I was never nearby. You moved on to, first of all, you were denied two Champions Leagues in a row by Juventus, so close to doing a back-to-back -back in 1996, when a friend of mine actually scored against you that night. Fabrizio Ravanelli. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, I lost connection. I lost connection. Ah. I think. Uh, okay, I can still hear you. Can you hear me? Uh, I thought you mentioned something that you had a friend, uh, an Italian friend. So, and at that point, I lost connection. Uh, <laughs> I fell for it. I fell for it. <laughs> Fantastic! Fantastic! Right, oh, I can't believe I fell for that. Love it. Um, so, anyway, you. Juventus became your next club, of course. You went there in 1999. You broke my heart a little bit, Edwin, going to Juventus in 1999, because that's when Peter Schmeichel left Manchester United. I thought it was the opportunity. Was there a chance, no, no disrespect to Juventus, wonderful club, loved the club, but was there an opportunity? Was there an approach by Manchester United back then? Uh, there was, yeah, but it was a little bit late. I think I had a discussion already with, uh, with Juventus in Italy. And uh, I think we shook hands and everything. And that I'm over at the airport. Then we got a call from, uh, you want to come over to Manchester to uh, to talk? And it was a little bit too late. So okay. in that way, I thought uh, uh, Italy will be a, another challenge, different language, different mentality. I think the Dutch and the English, it's, it's really similar, a little bit Northern European. I wanted to find, uh, find a different style of football. And I know uh, the, the kick and rush, but uh, not the plate anymore, of course. But uh, <laughs> in, back in the day, it was more uh, was that more the philosophy in uh, in, in in the UK. So uh, yeah, it could it could have been, but uh, I'm I'm really happy that uh, in the end we uh, we managed to uh, to, uh, to to get the move to Manchester, but uh, not yet in '99. No, no, not in '99. So can I ask you? Did you enjoy your time in Italy? You had two years, and it was kind of mixed in terms of. So close, yet so far from success. Would that be fair to say? True. Uh, you finished second uh, twice. 
with Juventus, you need to win the league. You want to win the Scudetto. So I, I didn't really feel, never really felt comfortable uh, all the time. So in that way, I think Club moved on and uh, they uh, they bought a young goalkeeper. Uh, what's his name? Well, Buffon. I think, yes, who, I think we uh, heard uh, was not a bad goalkeeper either and uh, did really well and uh, won all the trophies and prizes of the Juventus that he, that he could win. So congratulations mm-hmm. for... Uh, for the view on that, and for myself, uh, yeah, I got the opportunity to to move and uh, and, and get a move to England. Uh, not at the club that uh, or or a big club that I that I visit myself, mm-hmm. but at least it was it was in London and uh, and playing in the Premier League uh, was uh, was a joy. Yes, and as a fan, it was a joy to have you come to the Premier League as well. Just going back to Juventus for one second, I want to remind people, you had the best defensive record in those two seasons in the entire uh, table, in the entire division. This is, is, that, is that silverware? Is that something that you can, can, can bring home and, and put it in... Uh, put it in uh... No, it's not, it's so. not. It's not. But from a defensive point of view, I mean, that's you doing your job. I, I would criticize maybe the attackers for not scoring those extra goals. Yeah. But, you know, I don't think it's any coincidence that you had similar statistics when you came to United later. So well done on that. I only learned this yesterday. And I'm not sure if you're aware of it. Maybe you are. You were the first foreigner to yeah. ever keep goal for Juventus. That's incredible. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, it's it's a, it's a, it's a, they have a long history, so in that way it's a, it's a, it's it's been special. But to be fair, I, I would have rather changed that one for for winning the scudetto. Of course, of course, and that's understandable. Um, you did move to Fulham four years, is that right? At Craven Cottage. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So Fulham, very nice club, well respected club. Uh, what was it like the transition coming from Dutch football, Italian football, and then English football? Was it very different? Um, no, if, let's say for example in Italy, if you get a, a game on Sunday evening, nine o'clock, you went in the in the hotel on a Saturday before, after training. Um, and in, in in England, my first match, the Craven Cottage was I think whatever three o'clock, and, uh, and the guy said, "Okay, we we'll meet you up at quarter past one." I said on a Friday, no, no, quarter past one at the stadium. But it said that it's an hour and uh, hour and forty five minutes before the game. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, completely different, and uh, but no, I love my time at Fulham. Um, great part of, of London. I lived near uh, near Wimbledon, Richmond Park, and uh, of course uh, the club was in development. Development. Uh, Alfayette was 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 trying to to build a club. Uh, Jean Tigana as a manager, and a couple of other international players there. So I think there was a core of of, of English uh, English players and. Uh, Alongside that, the international players came in. Uh, reached the semi-final in uh, for the FA Cup. Uh, we played European football also. We uh, yeah we got to the third or the fourth round. So it's, it was really a nice nice period of my life. But at a certain point, you want yeah you want to win trophies again. You want to be respected. You want to win. Uh, I was not getting any older uh, any younger. So at a certain point, uh, I wanted to move on. And uh, yeah, it took a little bit longer, but at, at least at 34, I got. Uh, you got the opportunity to come to Old Trafford. Yes. And could you, I mean, in your, obviously you're hugely ambitious and, you know, you, you have this expectation of yourself. But honestly, back then, before United came calling, could you ever have envisioned the success that lay ahead of you between the ages of, as you said, th- was it 34 and 40 years of age? Mm-hmm. No, I think I, I, I signed a, I signed a two, year, two year contract. And in that, that matter, you're, uh, the only thing you wanted is, let's say, to win the win the Premier League, get a trophy. And um, I, was, I thought at 36, okay, I probably move back to uh, back to Holland, maybe one or two years Ajax, and that will be it. But uh, yeah, somehow it uh, it took a bit longer. Uh, started 2005, and of course, yeah, uh, you get great, great, great team, great manager, fans, stadium. Um, also living around Manchester, I loved it, of course. A little bit earlier in the dark, a little bit more rain than in London, but uh, in, g- in general, people uh, people let you uh, let you do your de- let you do your thing. The kids uh, the kids grew up there, so uh, I got very fond memories. Good, that's good to hear. And you know what? You touched on your family there. It's a, it's something that a lot of fans don't think of. We overlook it at times. How difficult is that uprooting your family? You know, they're settled in London, they're moving to Manchester, or even moving to England in the first place. 
Yeah, that's part and parcel of, the, of of being a football player and having a family, or having a wife, and and the decision that you that you take. And uh, yeah, it's it's your work. So yeah, teacher also can can relocate, or or uh, a businessman can also relocate his business. So in that way, it's uh, it's yeah, part and parcel of being a football player. And um, yeah, that's for your wife and the kids, you need to make a new connection, new schools. Of course, it's difficult, uh, but yeah, this was the dream uh, from from myself uh, and uh, sometimes th certain things have to need to have to have to give and yes. yeah the kids uh, need to give up uh, their, their school and their friends in London and, and move up and uh, but luckily my son uh, of course uh, was around uh, seven so he knew what football was and and and, and meant for me and also for him so that uh, that was already one supporter who uh, wanted that uh, that move uh, up north fantastic he's following in your footsteps is he yeah, yeah, he played. Uh, he trained at. Uh, played some uh, a couple of years at United, also also at Ajax, and uh, but it's, it's not yet uh, the Casper Schmeichel uh, uh, <laughs> success story. That's not that's not true. But he really enjoys uh, uh, being in goal and uh, and and uh, yeah, at every at every level, if you if you enjoy something uh, with with your, with your teammates and, and and try to get the best out of out of yourself. Um, actually, I was at your, I've had the pleasure of seeing you play many times at Old Trafford, but I was at your last two ever games. So when we won the title, uh, beating Blackpool 4-2, and then I got back on a plane six days later to go to Wembley for the Champions League final. So yeah. I was there and, you know, heartbreaking. We didn't win it, of course, you know, it would have been a lovely way for you to bow out. But I think it actually would have hurt more for me as a fan watching it on TV I just appreciated, the, this is me as a person anyway, I try to appreciate a situation, take the good even from a bad situation. So I appreciated the wonderful Barcelona team we were watching. I appreciated it was your last game and I, it was amazing for me to be there. Paul Scholes' last game, or so we thought. Um, so, you know, it was a special moment for me as a fan to be there. So I didn't want to sit there sulking. I wanted to enjoy the occasion. I remember looking at the referee, maybe 94th, 95th minute, and you were about to take a goal kick. He had the whistle in his mouth and he's about to blow the whistle. And I said, okay, this is Edwin's last touch as a professional football player. So I took a photo of, of that very moment. And I still have that photo, which I want to show to you. Um, it, to me, I just always thought, what a special moment, your last touch as a professional footballer. Your, your photo, your photo is the less, less official uh, professional moment that I had. Fantastic. I love you, it. I'll send you a copy of it, actually. I, I send it to me then. I will. I will. I promise. Um, okay. So you were very kind to sign a beautiful shirt for me from that game, the Champions League yep. final. Okay. Which, where, where am I? Okay. So that means a lot to me, Edwin. Thank you so much for that. Really appreciate it. I wanted to wear it for the interview. It's a pro probably a little bit too big for you. It's far too big for me, <laughs> five foot eight. Um, can I ask you, because I know I'm an avid collector of football shirts, but I know they're also very special to you, obviously, you know, for personal reasons as well. Do you have a personal favorite in terms of design or just memories? Um, no, not, not, not really. I think I... Um... Yeah, the, one, the bad thing of being a goalkeeper is that you always have a different jersey than the players. So I played for, let's say, famous clubs, Ajax, Red and White, Juventus, Black and White, Fulham. Okay, not everybody knows that, uh, that jersey, United, Red. And as a goalkeeper, you always turn up in a blue and a purple and a yellow and then in a green with, with, with black dots. I don't know. And so in that matter, but from, from when I was young, the, the, how a goalkeeper must look like in England was always a green shirt. Then uh, the the shorts from the from the players and the socks from the players. So in in my especially the early early periods uh, also at United, I I always loved to wear green. I thought it was uh, that was a color that, uh, that that that's meant to be for a goalkeeper. Mm -hmm. Peter Schmeichel had the same answer actually. I didn't ask him, but somebody was asking him. Yeah, interesting. Here we go. Maybe, we, uh, is, we almost we almost alike. Yes. Is it a case of blending in with the pitch? Maybe camouflage for the attackers. <laughs> No, I, I, think, I, think, I think Peter and myself, we are, we are, we are hard to, uh, to, to camouflage, to, to put away That's or something. And Peter, to talks, you guys. Peter talks a little bit more than me, uh, especially on the pitch. So uh, it's for him, it's, it's, it's impossible to keep his mouth shut, I think, for 90 minutes. 
Do you know what's so interesting about that is you are absolutely the two greatest goalkeepers in my mind in history, certainly for United. And yet you're so different. Your characters are so different. You always struck me as very composed. Mm -hmm. uh, Schmeichel, quite the opposite. But, you know, I guess just like in any walk of life, everybody's character is different. Schmeichel said shouting helped him focus. Well, you had a completely different character. It's just opposite ends of the spectrum, but same result, same result. Yeah, more or less. I think I like to coach more and not, not shout. Uh, I'm much more like short commands to, to Rio, to Pat, to Gary, to Wes, especially to, uh, to Gary, uh, to, to keep a position or, or uh, to stop the cross, that kind of thing. So, um, yeah, and, and I think and I anticipated a little bit more. So I was always, always concentrated on things that are going to happen. Yeah. And that way, uh, I think we're, we both have a different style. And but, uh, the, I think the amount of success we both brought to the club, uh, combined with the players that uh, that uh, that protected us as, as a back with the, as a back four, uh, uh, yeah, has been uh, been great. Fantastic. You know what? That 2008 team was just. I mean, you smashed records all over the place that time, and you still hold the record for the most consecutive clean sheets in the Premier League history. So, I mean, that was special. Patrice Evra, Nemanja Vidic, Rio Ferdinand, Gary Neville's kind of slash Wes Brown, they changed a little bit, and yourself. The understanding that that takes, and just, it was the perfect mix, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. It was the perfect mix. Yeah, I think if, you're, if you have Rio and Vida in front of you, like one, one who is like a real warrior, mm -hmm. uh, jumps at everything, has everything, kicks everything, and the other guy, also strong, but more comfortable on the ball. Patrice going on the left uh, with, his, with his intensity, with his running. And uh, Gary and Wes with with, 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 with the English determination. And, and Marcel being you know, the guy behind them. And, and they shielded myself. And I held them, of course, with, with saves. But yeah, a uh, big part of the, of the work has been done, of course, by, uh, by the players in front of you. Uh, can I ask you quickly about, I heard a story about uh, Cristiano Ronaldo when he a very young player at the time and he wanted to practice his free kicks. Is there a story about asking you to stay behind in training to help him? Yeah, no, often after, time, after training, the training finished, oh, I want to take some free kicks. So, okay, uh, Ronnie, take, uh, take one of the, the younger goalkeepers because uh, I'm old, I'm 36. And... No, 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 but I, I need to practice against the best. So, but yeah, Ronnie, if, if you do that against me, then you're not going to score. <laughs> And then he got a little bit irritated and then, okay, uh, let's go and go. And then, of course, he had a straight mark stand and, and walk up. And uh, then he let, uh, let fly a couple of those, uh, those special free kicks. And uh, it was always, uh, always uh, it's a fantastic guy. He's a tremendous hard worker and uh, really deserve all the accolades that he got, all the trophies that, he, that he's won over the years. So mm -hmm. uh, fair play to him. Yeah, he's special, isn't he? But uh, I love that story because, you know, he, he loves challenging himself. Obviously, to be the best, he had to beat the best. So that's yeah. why he asked you to stand and go. Um, yeah, he, he's an incredible inspiration. I think he's the perfect role model for kids to look at, the dedication that you never hear of him. You know, good-looking guy. You never hear of him in the newspapers for the wrong reasons. Incredibly mm -hmm. dedicated, and I really admire that. Uh, okay, Edwin, I won't keep you much longer. Let me just ask you um, about the Edwin van der Zaar Foundation. Do you want to tell people a little bit about this and what inspired the starting it up? Yeah, no, it, I think it happened two thousand nine. I was I was in Holland for uh, for an injury, and uh, my wife was here also. She uh, at, the moment, at that time she uh, she collapsed, and uh, at the end she uh, yeah she suffered a, a brain hemorrhage. So of course we went to the hospital, ambulance and everything. And she needed to stay three weeks uh, in the hospital. A lot of tests, a lot of things, a lot of. Uh, uh, anxiety is a lot of uh, fear uh, for uh, for our health and, 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 and what, what's going to be next for us. Mm -hmm. So to be fair, I got a lot of support from the club, from Ferguson, and uh, so the moment she recovered, uh, she could back, come back, uh, come back home, come back to Manchester, and and there also at the end of your career, you always feel hey, you got asked a lot of questions. Can you help with this? Can you help with that? And we th really thought, okay, how can we? Make a difference for people with who suffer a brain damage or brain damage. So we set up our own foundation, um, and in the last ten years, we've been yeah, helping yeah a lot of people uh, coming out of uh, isolation, um, uh, losing anxiety, losing their jobs, 
uh, what's going to happen. So in that way, we we we, we set up a couple of pro projects for for elderly people, for uh, for young kids, for for young adults. So in that way, it's uh, it, it's yeah, it's been really an inspiration to see people and 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 who are so thankful for the the time, the energy, and the and the money we, that we put into them. And that's uh, and I'm trying just to give them a little hand in 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 the way to that we got help when Henry was uh, was was down to uh, to get a helping hand in in the way to recover uh, as good as possible uh, to uh, get to full um, participating in the in society. Fantastic! Well, well done! An incredible work and using such a difficult time in your own life and Anne Marie's life to using it in such a positive way. So well done to both of you for that uh, and continue uh, success with the foundation as well. Oh, Edwin van der Zaar about to reveal some of my artwork. What an honor. I think this one was the first one that you made. There we go. Yes. So his first Champions League title with Ajax in 1995. A very young looking Edwin there. <laughs> and still young, still young. <laughs> Beautiful, very nice. And then we have the next Champions League triumph. This one is a nice one too. Yes, from Moscow in 2008. Very yeah, nice. There was Fletcher and... Michael Carrick. Michael Carrick and around me. Yes, so. yes. No, it's, it's, it's great. I like the little technique there with the black and white uh, slash color. It was like a mix. It works well. Fantastic. Thank you. No, so they're, they're, they're great. So, uh, it's uh, yeah, brings all every time you see them. It's an it's a fantastic yeah uh, throwback to the time that uh, yeah that we're kings of kings of Europe. Thank you, th thank you once again for it. My pleasure, my absolute pleasure. Thank you. You're doing wonderful things with Ajax. Before I let you go, you're doing wonderful things with Ajax. I get a special feeling like because history or uh, Ajax are a giant in European history, um, and I get the feeling that something special is starting to happen again in terms of success. So I just want to wish you and the club every success in the future. Please, not at the expense of Manchester United, <laughs> but I do wish you every success in the future. Continue to inspire, Edwin. Thank you for the glorious memories. And what an honor this is for me to, to be able to speak to you today. So thank you. No problem, no problem Jean. And yeah, once again, thanks very much. It was, uh, was nice talking to you and, uh, and all the best also. And uh, who, who knows? See you, see you at Old Trafford. Hopefully. And please pass all on right. my best to your family as well. Take yeah, care, everyone. Bye -bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.